Hi everybody, it's Peter Combin here and today I've got with me Sid Nell. Hi Sid. G'day Peter. Now, <laughs> well what we are, we're at the Property Expo here in Melbourne. Now, it's not often you come to Melbourne, but it's good to see you. Uh, what I'd like to do today is to ask you some questions to help the people who are watching this video to learn a little bit more about you first and your organisation, Prime Property. So are you happy to answer some questions for us? Certainly am. Okay, well let's go. Um, the first question I want to talk uh, to you about, or the thing I want to talk about, is your experience. Now, as a property investor and now a developer of property, you've got a lot of strings to your boat. Tell us how you got started, firstly, and uh, where things are at now. And so give us a bit of a synopsis of your history in property. Certainly. Um, I uh, originally started, I have a military background, and I originally started as an investor as a 19-year-old when I invested in uh, a two-bedroom unit in Canberra, actually. And I've always had a passion for property, and I've always actually, pretty much every year, I've been purchasing properties along the way. And when I left the military, it really gave me an opportunity then to... Uh, to do my to continue with my passion in, in the form of a business, and in fact, I really started as a business, uh, really providing investment advice, I would say, to clients, and actually working with clients and getting them into investment properties. Yeah, so um, that's a, a bit about the start. Now, as an investor, you must have uh, formed an opinion, and you've heard a lot of people speak about investing in property. Yes. What are some of the things that the investors who are watching really need to know about investing? Well, I think the uh, primary thing that you need to have as an investor is a strategy. I often uh, use this analogy in all my uh, seminars that uh, buy, uh, having an investment strategy is like buying a house. Okay? You wouldn't actually start building a house without a plan to build that house. What you do first is get a plan, get it approved, make sure the bank was going to fund it, which is nice as well, before you start building. Okay, then you'd build obviously your foundations first and make sure you've got really good foundations before you do the next level. You might then do your next level and do the, the last level. That takes time, Peter. It takes time to get the plannings done. It takes time to make sure that all your ducks are in a row. And it's very, very similar then to actually investing in property. You've got to have a good plan and have a good strategy. Now, that would be probably the major point that I want to actually emphasise. The second one is a, a lot of people uh, get mixed up between the uh, capital gain and returns, okay? And they believe that basically the capital gain is going to come, and as long and what happens, they forget that often property can be flat for five, four or five years. There may not be any capital gain for four or five years, and then suddenly they might get all of the gain they're going to get from the property in the, in the fifth year in that particular cycle. So really, what I've learned, it's very very important to look at the cash flow of the investment. Because it's the cash flow that allows you to retain that investment and then actually get the capital gain in the long term. If you have a good, good cash flow, then you won't be able to retain your investment portfolio. So it's really cash flow would be the second lesson. There's lots of other lessons as well, and I'm sure to come back out for this interview. Good, Sid. Well, that's a good start for us. And as we've already heard from you, uh, and we can tell from the way you talk, you're very passionate about yes, this subject. And both you and I have had some history in teaching people about investing in property. Certainly. And so what I'd like to go to next is a little bit about what makes you different from, say, some of the other people who are involved in investing in property and now developing property yes. and selling property, because um, you've been very successful. Now, I know you've got lots of properties and a lot of those have come from your own developments, but you've been very successful and I want the people watching to know what it is that, the keys that have made it successful for you. So can you tell us what it is about what you do that makes it uh, successful for you? As I understand your question, there's really two parts of the question. One is about my own investment portfolio and what's, what's been important for me in investing in property. But the second part of the question is what makes our company unique yeah. in terms of providing investment advice and investments for our clients. Is that yeah. right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So let me, ask, let me answer the, uh, f the first part of that question first. Uh, what's, what's been important about my own investment portfolio? Again, we go back to those uh, two key things. Strategy, having a strategy, and having an understanding of why I'm investing myself personally. Okay, And then having an understanding between maybe two types of assets. Those which I des describe as the passive part of my portfolio, which I'm going to retain long, long term. Okay, and those which are the active part of my portfolio, which I might be trading. Okay, And for me, the active part of my portfolio is, is, my, is my actual development arm. So whilst I do retain some of my own units and my own developments, 
actually most of the units, of course, would all have to trade, otherwise the bank won't lend me the money unless right. I pay them back. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's important in terms of my own portfolio, and it's been very, very important too, is uh, in terms of my own portfolio that I've actually continued with investing over a long period of time. It's not been something I just started sort of five years ago and I can tell you how I got really rich over the last five years. As I said, I bought my first investment property when I was 19 and I've really been buying investment properties all the way through uh, from 19 to obviously to today. And right now I'm still looking at investments here at the show, okay, and looking at other investments. I can't help it, unfortunately. I'm passionate about property. Now, that's the first part of the question. The second part of the question was really what makes us unique, okay, in the marketplace. Well, I guess because basically I was started as an investor, then gave investment advice, then started a sales and marketing organisation, okay, and then I then gravitated into development because what I wanted to do was actually ensure that I could actually develop the properties for my own clients, which they would then invest in, okay. And so, what makes us unique? And then from development, I then gravitated into management. Okay, because what I wanted to be able to do is manage these particular properties at the end of the development cycle. So I guess what makes us unique is I provide a womb to tomb, uh, 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 womb to tomb service for my clients. So in other words, I find the developments, I do the research. Obviously, before we actually commit ourselves as developers, we then develop the properties, we sell the properties. And of course, we manage the properties at the other end, and that's what makes us unique. I don't know if there's too many organisations like me that do everything, Peter. Now look, there's specialists uh, who look after the marketing of properties, which is where I first met you and yes. you were involved in that. Uh, there are specialists who understand developing property and I've done a lot of that and so you're now into that. Yes. Uh, but you've covered everything, including now the management. Now that's, I think, really does make you unique. Now I know, Sid, that you cover all these bases for investors, so what, what I want to do is still help the investors to know a little bit more about what they should do if they're looking to buy their first, maybe second investment property. What are some of the things that uh, you would be saying to them right at the moment? I mean, you've obviously got some good projects you'd like to show them, but what is it, if you were an investor yourself starting out, what would you be wanting to do right now in today's market? Well, certainly, as I said, I think cash flow is a key. I keep on coming back to cash flow and how important cash flow is in today's market, whether you're a property investor or running a small business or even the large businesses, it's cash flow which is the key. Um, so what I'd be saying is have a good look at the property and have a good look, good look at the property in terms of its returns, okay, and a cost of ownership, okay, and a cost of ownership is very important as well. There's often a lot of criticism, for example, about apartments, that it costs you more to own apartments because of very large body corporate fees. But of course, the thing is, the, the other side of the fence, of course, is that at least the body corporate fees will pay for the maintenance of the external part of those particular apartments. So it's ma making sure you understand all the facts and figures on the property and making an informed decision. That's what I'd be saying to any investor, whether it's their first property or whether it's the part of their tenth property of their portfolio. A lot, of, a lot of people just want you to trust them, and uh, like in property, it's like any other uh, thing that people want to sell. They want to trust you, but with you, Sid, what they can do is they can actually look at your track record, right, they can look correct. at what you're doing and assess it for themselves. And, and so um, how do you go about finding the properties that you're actually now introducing to clients? How do you do that? Yeah, well, uh, part of my background is I did a Master's Commerce degree and actually did also a Master's IT and also lectured at university in, uh, in economics and management. So I guess I consider myself to be a mainstream economist and as a result I do a lot of reading myself about what's happening in the world and what's happening basically in the Australian economy and what's happening in the, indiv in the individual parts of the Australian economy. And so from that then I then form an opinion about where I'd like my clients to be. And I formed an opinion about five years ago that I'd like my clients to be in the resource rich areas of Australia and that's why I went out and brought and actually looked at opportunities in cities like Glasden, in cities like Perth, in cities like Toowoomba. Okay? So that's, that's why if you like, if you look at what, what's behind us here and you look at the opportunities which are going to come up in our organisation, they've been very targeted towards where I see the, the right balance between capital growth and returns and I said it's the returns which is often more important than the capital growth over a long term, long term period. So you can tell even just from listening to Sid now that he has chosen a particular um, area of the property market in Australia and yes. look um, how do people do research for themselves and actually check 
that you are telling them the right thing? Is there places they can look? Well, I think when you're doing research, there's, there's lots and lots of channels that you can go to. Obviously, the internet provides a huge vehicle now. Uh, obviously, there's a, a huge number of specialists here, even at the show, which you should spend your time talking to. I would, I would certainly attend some of the presentations and excellent seminars which are held by, by various people at the show. I'd be talking to people firsthand about their experiences. I'd be looking at uh, the popular press and been obviously reading some of that. There's, there's, uh, there's a whole bunch of very, very good uh, magazines and publications on the Property Investment Magazine, the Money Magazine. Uh, there's some fantastic uh, journals now. So all of that, there's some books. There's some excellent uh, books now on the Australian property market. So all of this is important, but, uh, but ultimately you've got to make a decision. And what I do see often what happens with people who do their own research and rely totally on their own research is they get paralysed. Okay, they get paralysed because uh, sometimes a lot of that research can be, uh, can be actually, uh, it can be controversial. It, it can uh, doesn't necessarily marry up with what somebody else says. Okay, so for example, right at the moment we've got a big dilemma in the Australian property market. Do you go out and buy properties in the US? Do you go and buy properties in Europe? Okay, which may in fact be a lot cheaper and look on on the first basis may look actually be better returns from the Australian property market. Or do you then continue to buy Australian pro Australian properties? So that's a big question to start with. Okay, what I would say is do your research and make sure you do have a balanced portfolio and it might mean that you buy properties in each sector. So it might mean that you do go out and invest in a US property, you might buy a property in Sweden for example which is another hot point, a hot place in, uh, in, uh, in Europe at the moment. But don't go and buy, put all your portfolio in that and don't go and put all your portfolio in the my type of properties. Have a balanced portfolio of properties moving forward. Again, it goes back to the first point I made about a strategy. If you've got a strategy, okay, part of the strategy is then is an acquisition strategy that sits behind that and then you decide what parts of the, of, of the sectors you want to be in in this particular strategy moving forward. Thanks, Sid. Well, um, just listening to you again, it raises a few other questions for people watching. I know you've become a specialist in particular with apartment buildings and we might ask you about that in a moment. But as you said, all investors need to look at a whole lot of strategies and uh, perhaps different um, investments, whether it's a house and land or whether it's an apartment, yes. it, it, whether it's a commercial property. Yes. Every investment has its merits and uh, at the moment in the Australian market, what, what do you think is working the best and, and what can you offer the clients who are watching um, in terms of returns, because you keep talking about returns. Yeah. Can you tell us a bit about what you've got on offer and what, what sort of returns you're getting? My clients are looking for uh, plus 10% returns and what they're doing. Uh, if they're borrowing money traditionally for the banks at 6%, and particularly if they're newer properties and they're getting a depreciation allowance, at plus 10% returns is going to give them somewhere in the order of $20,000 cash flow positive every year. Now with that, cash, that amount of cash, they can then use that money either to reduce debt or they can use that money to obviously fund some another part of their portfolio which may be orientated towards more capital gain, if you like, uh, orientation. Okay. Now, to find those sorts of returning properties is difficult in Australia. Okay. We've been able to achieve it because our properties are suitable not only for own occupation, not only for long-term rentals, okay, which won't give you those sorts of returns, but they're also suitable for short-term corporate leasing. Now, short-term corporate leasing is about people staying in the properties, for example, for one day, one night, I should say, through to one week, through to, through to a month. Okay? And generally, it's the corporates okay, within the community which we want to attract because it's the corporates who have got the... At the moment, they've got the big, big, uh, the big bank, bank balances behind them. Okay, and in particular, we want to attract the corporates from the mining sector related to the mining sector. Okay, so we're, why we're able to achieve such high returns because our properties are not only suitable for long-term rentals, but are also suitable for short-term rentals. And it's the short-term stuff which really differentiates me from the other competition at the moment. That's the sector which I thoroughly understand. That's the sector which I manage. Okay, and that's why I'm in this business because I want to deliver plus ten percent returns to my clients. Coming to that ten percent return, yes. um, that 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 is amazing. Uh, thinking about you know what is available out in the market. Now, in terms of management, how does the management work in your uh, buildings? Say you have some people who are owner occupiers and some people yes. who want to um, have their property leased by corporates. Now, do the corporates actually 
uh, lease a property for sometimes for 12 months or even three years? Uh, do they only lease them for a week or a month or yeah. whatever? Can you help us a little bit more on that? We do have some long-term contracts. Uh, for example, in our Glaston property, we have a very long-term contract with a major uh, major person in Glaston or a major corporation in Glaston. Okay, and they have actually taken out a 12-month lease on 30 rooms. Okay, and, and the total contract's 1.4 million dollars plus. So those sort of things do exist, Peter. But most of our contracts are one night, two nights, three nights, two months type contracts. Okay, uh, we're mainly targeting the two nights, the four night stays because that's where the money is. The money is in that real short term stuff where people are quite happy to pay three hundred dollars a room per night. Okay, for a short term, and we can obviously then achieve two thousand dollars a week on a normal two bedroom apartment. Now oh, that's fantastic. Now those sort of returns are just not available with uh, our normal houses. Yes. Uh, perhaps if you've got one in Murrumbah, you yes. might be getting those sort of returns. That's right. Or over in Port Hedland. That's right. But in terms of uh, in those other resource-rich locations, and I think that's the other thing that we have to be careful of too, that we don't buy necessarily into the mining town itself, that's right. but it's the places that you've chosen. And maybe you could comment on that because there is a difference between the mining towns and the places that we are actually having uh, your big projects and uh, where you're investing. Uh, there's certainly a place for product in uh, Dysart, in uh, Chinchilla, uh, in Middlemount. Uh, certainly there's, there's room for that product. Okay, what we, we our strategy is to prioritise where we go. And the areas which we see as the, as the largest priorities at the moment are Gladstone, uh, Bowen, Rockhampton, Mackay, and probably another development in Townsville. That's where we see from a, uh, from a uh, central apartment group where we want to be. Okay. Now, having developed those particular centres, I guess also I probably should also mention Emerald okay, is another, another potential spot where we may go with our particular product. Now, having developed, if you like, those major nodal points and having a four-and-a-half star product of those nodal points, we may then look at other types of products in places like Dysart, uh, Collingsworth, uh, Porter Headland, Carafa, etc. Okay, but our our focus is to stay, if you like, in the in the major nodes, because it's not just about mining. And I think this is your point uh, you brought up before, Peter. It's about basically Glaston's not just about mining. It's about the fact that it's the second largest port in Australia. It's the fact that it's got a large university campus. It's got a lifestyle component for Heron Island. It's got a, uh, a fantastic agriculture and, man it's, and actually small manufacturing base. Uh, there's a lot of manufacturing goes on there. It's got nothing to do with mining. It's about basically being a major centre for that particular region uh, in terms of providing infrastructure and support. So when you're looking at these locations that you choose, you're looking into all the growth aspects, not just of mining. Absolutely. And of course, being near the coast is always more attractive. <laughs> because you've got that, that other benefit. And uh, the gravitation to the coast has always been the Australian way, hasn't it? Now, I just... I don't know... Um, right now, for the people watching, yes. they probably need to know a little bit more detail about what you might have on offer at the moment. I know that some of your projects have sold out, but yes. let's, let's uh, just have some information. And where, where can they get information about the current projects that are available? Our release strategy at this stage is that we're going to release our third project in Gladstone, which is Gladstone Central International. Our planned release date is probably the second week or third week of November uh, 2011. Okay, And what we do is when we release a project, we basically send it out to our database. And unless you're part of our database or unless you've actually registered yourself for the release information, you're not going to know about the project in the early stages. Once we go through and give our, our own clients an opportunity, if you like, to pre-select uh, parts of the project, then what we then will do is we'll do a public release, okay, and then of course the information will be available on realestate.com, the information will be available in the in the normal journals and be available through the papers, etc., and on our own website. So that's basically how we release. So it's really important if you do want to be on uh, uh, by any of our projects, please register your, your name, register your interest in a particular project, and uh, certainly we will send you out a very comprehensive. Uh, release package once we release this particular project. Uh, contact the office at any time, happy for you to contact me directly and register your interest or go on to uh, sales at primeinvestment.com.au And one of the things that you will find, and I've found this myself, Sid is very, very well uh, prepared 
and he's got all the stats, he's got all of the numbers. You'll be able to buy something in your price range. It'll be something that will give you the returns. He'll give you projected returns. Tell me a little bit about how these properties start off and what can happen after two or three years with, with regards to returns. We talked about that earlier. Yes. So maybe you could help us with that. Our management systems are very flexible. Firstly, and a very important point, is you don't have to use us as the management company at the end of development. And a lot of clients actually buy them and they're owner occupiers or they use an external agent. We would like, however, to be your managers by choice. Okay. Now, we can offer free management systems. We, we almost always offer a three-year rental guarantee initially for those clients who want to take up a rental guarantee. We do that because some clients don't know the areas and actually want to have the peace of mind that they're getting a fixed return in the first three years. If you, if you, we also can offer a long-term management system where basically you can have your properties managed long-term and we charge a fee of 10% or the normal long-term management fee to manage your properties long-term. We find then people in leases for 12 months or for two years or whatever in terms of what's happening in a particular region. The third way you can do it is under the split management system where essentially we become your partners. And what we do is we take the income which we're receiving from the apartment and we charge a fee. In fact, it's a 50-50 fee. We get 50% and you get 50%. So, for example, we go back to what we talked about before, Peter. For those apartments earning $2,400 per week, yeah. they would get $1,200 okay, yeah. after the fees. Now, what happens is our system is very unique because we look after almost all of the maintenance on the property. In fact, I don't think any of our clients have received maintenance bills from our system at all after three or four years. At that rate, you're still giving them a very good return. So what sort of returns uh, occur after you've yes. got involved, after the first year, second year, third year, what can they see? Uh, is there growth in that time? The average returns in Ascot and Perth, I'm only going to go off of what's obviously happening right now. Yeah, I'm yeah. Ask, yep. You ask me very specific questions about specific properties, and I'll, I'll, yep. I'll answer that question best okay. as I can. In Ascot, if you're on a split management system right now in Perth, you're getting somewhere between 16 and 18% return on your original investment price, which I think would be the best returning properties in the whole of Australia. Okay, I don't know. I don't know all the properties in Australia, but I would think it would be. Now, if you're looking at, say, Toowoomba, if you're on a split system, you'd be getting about 11% returns in Toowoomba. In Glaston, if you were on a split system in Glaston right now, you'd be getting about 18% returns in, in, in Glaston right now. On the figures, we've really got right at the moment on our books. They're three very specific examples, and even in Cairns and in Cloundra, the returns are a lot higher than what you get through normal uh, rental management. I think we can all pick up from Sid that the knowledge is there, the properties are there, the returns are there. All you need to do is uh, meet Sid uh, or get onto the website. Uh, well, you're probably there now while you're watching us, but what you need to do now is to follow up uh, watching this video and uh, contact Sid. Um...